Hey, what's up guys? Auto Fanatics. So in this video today, we're going to be doing an oil extraction of some of the AMSOIL 0W40 from my Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. And we're going to be sending it out to Blackstone Labs to do a full oil analysis. And I'm going to get the results back tomorrow. And I'm going to put everything together in this one video. I'm going to go over every single detail of the current engine health of my Giulia Quadrifoglio. Now, I've had the car for a little over a year and a half, almost a year and a half right now. Uh, and I drive the car hard every single day and I'm on my third oil change So I have brand new AMS oil 0 w40 and a filter and I'm gonna do an oil change But before I do this new oil change, I want to see exactly the wear and tear on the 2.9 liter bi turbo v6 with me driving it daily in the New York City area and romping on it all day long uh, We're gonna see so let me just get the uh, camera close and I'll show you a little bit about the Blackstone laboratory uh, test kit that comes in the mail okay, guys so we're on my uh, workbench here so the entire kit comes in these little plastic containers and it also includes postage but in my situation I don't use the generic postage that's on here it could take several weeks for them to get it so I already have a FedEx medium box with my company label on there it's already prepaid we're gonna overnight this thing in about an hour it gives you these little plastic HDPE canisters you, you collect your oil you put it in there and then you're gonna want to put your label as far as the car, your address, all the information as well. And this just gives you a little bit. So it's 28 bucks uh, to do this. And like I said, there's no charge really for expediting except for the shipping that I'm already covering uh, through my account. Gives you uh, some oil absorbent. These are like little miniature, what they call pig mats. And when you put the oil in the container, they want you to wrap it with the pig mat and then put it inside the poly bag and then put it inside the container just so it's safe in transport. So just want to show you guys, uh, these are some sample reports that I pull off their website. This is their website. It's called Blackstone Labs. I'm sure everybody knows it. Now, I tend to use this service almost all the time when it comes to vintage cars that I'm working on because a lot of vintage cars are very, very um, critical in terms of the fuel, the way the engine was rebuilt, wear and tear, and all that stuff. So usually uh, whenever I'm doing a restoration or working on a classic car, I almost always do a Blackstone oil analysis to kind of know where I'm at. So what this is going to do, um, it's going to show all the particular matter that's in the oil from aluminum, chromium, iron, copper, lead, uh, nickel, silver, potassium, phosphorus, zinc. Uh, it's also going to go through the flash point, the fuel percentage, how much uh, oxidized burned fuel is in the actual motor oil. It's also going to check antifreeze. If you have antifreeze in your sample, you definitely have a serious issue with your engine. Uh, this is definitely uh, something really cool to do, and I'm just going to read this off to you. So, according to the sample report, this is a Dodge Ram. It has a fuel system problem and possibly an antifreeze problem, too. There are contaminants are causing poor wear in the upper and lower ends. So, according to Blackstone's analysis, this was done two years ago, it says that there is aluminum and wear metals across the board from piston wear, and the chrome indicates quite a bit of ring wear. Iron shows excessive wear at steel parts, and copper is from brass and bronze parts like bearings, which would also explain lead. It says, unless any gasoline engine oil was added by mistake, sodium shows a little coolant, and that could be causing excessive wear. Silicon could be abrasive dirt contamination or maybe harmful sealers if work was done recently. Check air filtration system for leaks and cracks. 5% fuel is enough to show a fuel system problem with a leaky injector. If fuel has been present for a while, it could be causing poor wear and tear. Change this oil and check for a problem and retest. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. So before I, I do the new oil change, which is going to be pretty straightforward, I'm going to show you guys exactly the wear and tear of my engine with me driving it. And we're going to see how well the AMSOIL 0W40 Signature Series Synthetic has been holding up in a 2.9 liter Ferrari designed by turbo v6 so we're gonna be using my EWK I'm gonna this whole reservoir was completely cleaned out every time I use it I clean it out with mineral spirits and I flush it out and it's dry so there's not gonna be any contaminants that is in this reservoir that's gonna cause any kind of a skew with the results so I'm gonna attach it we're not gonna use the air compressor I'm gonna hand pump it we're gonna create a vacuum we're gonna suck some oil out of the dipstick just enough to send one complete sample container to Blackstone Labs. So let's get over to the car right now. Let's get this set up. Right, so first order of business, I just threw a folded fender protector on the front of the engine. 
uh, just while we're working on it so the tubes don't drag against the paint and cause scratches. Grab yourself a shop towel, wear some good nitrile gloves. First step here, we're gonna pull out the dipstick. And you have to do this with the engine at operating temperature. You don't wanna do it when it's cold. And I could still see, you can see the oil right there, how clean that oil looks. Okay, look at that right there. I have to try to get the camera to focus. So it's not black, it doesn't smell like gasoline, and that's pretty much where we're at. So carefully, I'm gonna insert this into the engine. Dipstick tube, just like that. You're gonna kind of feel it bottom out. Okay, so we're all connected. So let's create the vacuum. Give it a couple of pumps. You could already see the oil getting drawn up into the pickup tube. And we're just gonna patiently wait. You could hear it dribbling into the reservoir. So that's why I put the fender shield probably, wanna, probably a little bit more and then we're pretty much good to go. And then I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna disconnect this and we're gonna pour it right into the Blackstone Labs test container. And we're gonna release the pressure just like that. So we're pretty much done. So we definitely extracted enough oil to do this test. You're gonna see any remaining oil in the tube is gonna go back into the crankcase. And uh, let me get this disconnected and make sure I don't make a mess. And then we're gonna go over to a bench and we're gonna get this thing off the Blackstone. Oh, Put something down on your table. Always have a shop towel at hand. And just, this comes with a nice little spout at the end. And we're just gonna tilt it and pour what we extracted into this container. Oh geez, without making a mess. There we go, we made a little bit of a mess. Okay, so we're gonna clean that up. Pretty good. But you guys saw the oil from the dipstick when I pulled it out, it's clean. This oil does not have any foul smell. I would smell it. So here's what we're gonna do. According to what they want, is they want you to wrap the included pad just like this. Okay. And then we're gonna put it in the included bag that it gives you. Just like that. bag is going to go inside the container just like that and we're pretty much good to go so stay tuned to the rest of the video when we come back in 24 hours we're going to have the full oil analysis of my Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio I'm going to button the car back up put the oil dipstick back in and pull it out of the garage and we're going to see what's going on so uh, this is pretty painless these kits they'll send it out for free so stay tuned to the rest of the video and we'll, we're going to go over the report together. So it is Friday evening, January 10th, and I just got the Blackstone Laboratory report on my Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Actually, I'm just going to go over this quickly with you and uh, just go over some of the numbers and stuff of what they found. But like I said, this is still a brand new car. It doesn't have 20, 30, or 50,000 miles, and it's still definitely uh, in the break-in phase. So... Here's some of the results we got here, and I'll just read over the, uh, the report. So uh, they said, Phil, iron tested is a little high compared to the universal averages, but at this point, the iron is probably just lingering wear in that hasn't washed out yet because the car is still new. It also could be related to hard use. That is a factor for this engine type. There was some water in the oil, but hopefully that's just sample contamination or a little condensation. Uh, there probably could have been some water in the pickup tube of my EWK extractor uh, from when I washed it out a while ago. It doesn't appear to be from coolant. The fuel tested at 1.8% of the sample, and that may have thinned the viscosity a little. Though normally, this amount of fuel isn't enough to cause or show any problems. Check back to monitor. Now, the reason I did this uh, test is that I waited 5,900 miles since I did my last oil change. 
Now, since I did the last oil change on the factory filled oil, my car, the first few months of owning it, it burned over two quarts of oil. That's pretty much normal on a lot of cars and that's why you really have to monitor your oil. So aluminum is number nine. Uh, the universal average is six. Chromium is one, the universal average is one. Iron is 76, the universal average is 33. But that's also relevant towards what type of engine and, and the components and how this is manufactured. So the iron is gonna be high, and I'm gonna mark that here with my highlighter at 76. Now copper is 39, universal average is 27, lead zero, universal average is seven. Tin, zero, universal average is zero. Molly is 167, universal average is 110. Now Molly is basically a component and like uh, using coatings uh, such as the bearings on the crankshaft assembly or the wrist pins of the pistons. So that's very common to have that a little bit higher. So these are a couple of things that I'm picking up right off the top just from doing these oil analysis for so many years. So we have high, a little bit high on the iron, the molly, and uh, nickel is 12. That's a little bit high as well. Manganese is two, so that's normal. Silver is three, that's about normal. Titanium is zero. Potassium is five. The universal average is two, and the universal average is 52. Silicon is 12, the universal average is 12. Sodium is eight. Universal average is nine, so the sodium is a little lower. Calcium now is 1,307, and the universal average is 2,041. Not really sure, but it could just be because of the oil uh, compound that I'm using. Magnesium is 593. Universal average is 194, so the magnesium is high, but that's also, I think, in the oil that I'm using as well. Phosphorus, 676. Universal average 837, zinc 760, universal average 956. So a couple other points that they brought up here, uh, the viscosity at 210 degrees Fahrenheit is 59.2. The value ranges between 65 and 75. So that shows a little bit of wear and tear and a little viscosity thinning, uh, and that's pretty much normal, especially on a car like this. Uh, there's no antifreeze, that's definitely good. The water is definitely from uh, the sample or the extraction tube, and everything else shows good. So from what this report is showing is that this engine is still breaking in, and it's still not at its maximum potential yet, most likely. And like I said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the oil change, most likely in a couple of days. And then come springtime, uh, possibly May or June, I will repeat the test. They sent me another sample kit here. And I'll test it to see if these numbers go down as far as the common break-in numbers of an engine between the iron, the molly, and the boron. And like I said, those are pretty normal on a new car, and especially a turbocharged car, uh, you know, based on the components and what's going on in the manufacturing. So as a result, my Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio is not going to blow up anytime soon. Uh, runs like a top. There's no valve train noise whatsoever. There is not a drop of burned oil. The car performs absolutely flawlessly, and you saw the oil coming out of the dipstick. It looks clean as when I put it in a number of months ago. So I actually let the oil go a little bit longer. Now, AMS oil tells me you could run this oil for about 10,000 miles, but to be honest with you, I was like, I don't really want to stretch any oil change for 10,000 miles on any car that I personally own. I just wouldn't do it. Uh, so I let this one go for 5,900 miles, and that's probably a little excessive. I think I should have done it you know, about 5,000 miles instead, but now's the time to do it. We're going to be doing an oil change, so I'm going to most likely change the oil uh, probably about another 5,000 miles, and we're going to do another test, and I will update you guys with another exclusive video, and I will also put all of this content on the Auto Fanatic website under the Lifestyle News section. Bookmark the page if any of you guys have this car anywhere around the world and are curious if you guys have done a similar test on your Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio or your Stelvio Quadrifoglio, please comment or send me an email. I want to know what your report shows, what oil you used, the intervals of the oil change, and uh, exactly the mileage and daily use that you're driving your car as well. So hope you guys like this video. Um, like I said, I'm going to be doing another one of the Blackstone Analysis Labs on my brand new Shelby GT350R. And on that particular car, 
I'm at the almost at the 500 mile mark. The weather's just been not cooperating. I haven't been using the car. So we're going to drain it, the factory fill. I'm going to send out the factory fill to get tested. Then we're going to put the new oil in, probably about a, maybe 500 to 1,000 miles. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to send that out to get tested. And we're going to kind of you know monitor and gauge exactly where everything is. And I think this is kind of fun to share with you guys. Uh, and it's kind of interesting to see the changes. So this is this is a baseline. I probably should have done a test like this with the factory fill, but I didn't do it. I wasn't thinking about it at the time, but uh, I think going forward, uh, just, you know, it's kind of cool content and cool to share some of the technical uh, af aspects of this kind of stuff with you guys. I mean, I'm not an oil engineer at all to really understand a lot of this stuff, but I do understand about wear and tear of metals and the components of what goes into a com natural combustion engine. So I'll see you guys soon. Please like, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned to the channel for more automotive content. And I'll see you guys on the next video real soon. Take care, guys.